Example five is unidirectional heat transfer through a slab in which there's a generation term. Here, we have a thermal conductivity that's going to be constant throughout the slab. And the question is asking for the temperature profile. So whatever we hear temperature profile, we know that we're going to be using the heat equation. Here's the geometry of our solar cell. It's five millimeters thick and either side of the panel is isothermal at 25 degrees C. Inside the entire bulk of the solar cell, heat is being generated due to the photoelectric effect at one gigawatt per meter cubed. The coordinate axis we can set up anywhere we want. And so for this example, I'm just setting x equal to zero to be at one edge of the solar panel. If you look at the way this problem is solved in your course notes, it's set up differently so that x equals zero is in the center of the silicon panel. And both ways do actually yield the identical solution. Um, it's not the identical equation, but it gives you the same temperature at the same spatial position. And so I think it's worth comparing this solution that we're going to work out now to the solution that's already in your course notes. If we choose the correct form of the heat equation, it's going to be zero accumulation because it's a steady state problem. And this time we're allowed to take K outside of the first X differential because K is constant with respect to temperature. And finally, we've got this additional generation term due to uh, light, which is basically heating up the solar panel. In this case, the heat equation is linear. It's second order, but it's no longer homogeneous because we have a constant term from QV. However, it is still separable. So we separate the equation and integrate once. That gives us our first constant of integration. We separate the equation and integrate a second time. We arrive at the solution to this differential equation. Our next step is to apply the boundary condition so that we can solve for the constants of integration, C1 and C2. We apply the first boundary condition by plugging in the constraints that at the far edge of the silicon panel, zero meters, the temperature is 298 Kelvin. Likewise, we apply the second boundary condition by plugging in the temperature as 298 at a position of five millimeters, and we write that in meters to agree with the units of our thermal conductivities. Our first equation in the system simplifies pretty easily because there's two zero terms, and we can directly compute that the second constant of integration is 298 Kelvin. And I'm going to include the units for these constants of integration because it's good form, and it's also a nice sanity check to make sure that the units you calculate for the constants of integration give you back units of Kelvin for your temperature. The first constant of integration is a slightly more complicated. I've included the units of the dimensions used to compute it. And when I put that into my calculator, I get a single solution. Finally, we're able to actually plug our constants of integration along with all of the uh, constants of the problem, like the heat generation rate and the thermal conductivity, back into the solution for our differential equation to get our particular solution in terms of numerical values. So that is the first answer to this question. The second part is asking us at what spatial coordinate is the temperature at a maximum? And so to calculate a maximum, we just need to differentiate this expression and set that equal to zero. We differentiate once taking care to write down the units of the constants as we go. Setting the temperature derivative equal to zero enables us to calculate either the maximum or the minimum. We can check that it's a maximum by looking at the curvature of the second derivative. It is a maximum. And the x-coordinate at this maximum temperature position is given here, and it's 0 0.0025 meters which is exactly halfway through the solar cell thickness. In retrospect, this is not a surprise because the hottest point of a body is often at the center, 
That's what our intuition suggests, and we've demonstrated this through our calculations. The very last part of the question is asking, what is this maximum temperature? So to do that, we need to plug in our x maxed position into the heat equation that we've determined above. Um, working through the maths, we get an expression for T max, which turns out to be 319 Kelvin. Coming back to our schematic, we'll set a virtual temperature coordinate that looks like a spatial coordinate here. So T max is at the top of the figure and T minimum is at the bottom of the figure. Um, again, this is just a way for us to visualize the temperature profile against a spatial set of coordinates. Uh, we know that the temperature profile is parabolic. It reaches its maximum halfway between the two edges, and so I'm going to attempt to draw a symmetric concave down parabola that goes between the wall temperature, 298, and the maximum temperature, 319. So this is what happens when you have generation inside of a body. You break from that linear profile, even at steady state. What if there were no generation in the solar cell? It would just be a flat profile at 298 Kelvin because there would be no driver for a temperature gradient. So just a small amount of generation can have a huge impact on what the temperature profile looks like through a body. Um, thank you. That was example five, and I will see you next week.